Hey, what's up guys? It's Pete with MixBetterNow.com and today I want to show you how to gain stage your mix in Pro Tools. Let's check it out. All right, so we have a session here in Pro Tools. Uh, what I have done is I have gone and uh, dragged all of the tracks in. Uh, I've set everything up how I like it, uh, color coding, naming, routing, all that good stuff. Um, I'm going to show you my routing first uh, before we dive into the physical gain staging just so that it makes sense to you. Okay, uh, drums are in red. Uh, buses are in yellow. So uh, we have kick drums going to a kicks bus, snares go to a snares bus, uh, toms to toms. Uh, the overheads and room mics go to uh, an overhead room bus. And then finally, uh, we have our drum bus here. Now the drum bus goes out to what I call all drums, which is basically uh, a VCA. Uh, those come down here uh, that are next to the sub mix and the mix bus. Uh, I will show you those in a second. Uh, we have one percussion track, uh, tambourine, that goes to the percussion bus. Uh, the reason I have a bus, I, I work off a template, so sometimes you'll get one track like this, sometimes you'll get 15, you know, 14 uh, stomp tracks, claps, tambos, shakes, all kinds of stuff. Um, we have one bass going to a bass bus. Again, I often get more than one bass track. Uh, we have acoustic guitars here going to an acoustic guitar bus, uh, electric guitars, will come to an electric guitar bus. Uh, both guitar buses come to what I call guitar level. Now this goes out to an all music bus, okay? All music is down here. I forgot to mention that the percussion goes to what I call all percussion. Bass goes to uh, low end, which is essentially a bass bus. Um, and then we have keys here going to a keys bus that goes to all music. Uh, and then we have vocals coming to a lead vocal and a background vocal bus. Uh, those both go to a vocal level, which then goes to all vocals, and then I have my effects, my all effects set up. I don't have any effects set up. I uh, haven't gotten that far yet, but uh, all six of these tracks here, okay, these are aux sends. These all go to uh, the sub mix, which is where I'll do all my processing, and then the mix bus here is our stereo out, which is the master fader, and this is where I have all of the metering. Now, um, the all buses are a pretty important part of this whole process for me. Now, real quick, I'm going to show you why I don't use a VCA. So let's just say I go ahead and say I want to do a stereo um, VCA. Now, it's very simple uh, as to why I don't uh, use these is because there's no inserts. Okay. So the reason that I like to use these all buses here is because uh, I just find many advantages uh, when it, whether it's uh, automating uh, or if I'm pushing too much level into uh, my submix or my mix bus, I can lower them, raise them. Uh, there's just a lot of things that we can do, so I find them helpful. Okay, so before I go and start uh, kind of moving uh, uh, levels of tracks, I like to do a static mix with the uh, with the tracks from the session without changing any levels. So I've gone ahead and uh, done a quick rough static mix. Um, what I will do is I will start from the most uh, uh, dense uh, part of the arrangement, which is going to be the second chorus here. We have just about every single instrument uh, in. Now, the reason that's important is because when I am metering, uh, I want to see how much uh, we're essentially pushing into uh, the stereo out, okay? So I'm going to use um, uh, Insight from Isotope. I like to use a, uh, it's a great meter. Uh, the BX meter is great. Uh, BX control is great. We have a similar meter here, and we can actually do some other stuff like stereo widening. Blue Cat makes a great, a great meter. So let's just take a listen uh, and see where everything is. Now the reason this is important is because I've gone ahead and done um, this this rough static mix pan stuff. Um, what's important is that uh, you know if I were to raise these faders, I would be pushing more volume into the buses, which are then pushing more volume into the mix bus. My goal when I gain stage is to get my mix bus or my stereo out at X level and most of the time X level for me is negative 18 uh, RMS negative 18 uh, uh, decibel full scale uh, I type the target into here uh, we have our peak level as well so uh, let's go ahead and play uh, play the track and take a look at how much uh, level we're pushing into the uh, to the stereo out So 
So it's about negative uh, 16. Uh, it might actually even be a little bit more. Um, let me go ahead and turn these off. Well, you can take my heart to the limit. It'll keep me coming back yeah, so it's about negative 13 RMS at the at the loudest point, uh, but that can be a little bit deceiving. Um, I don't recommend starting from quiet parts, like if I go to verse 1. Questions fired out of the cannon. Verse 1 shows a much lower level because it is a lower level, it's quieter, there's less instrumentation in at that part, right? Because what the mix bus is, what the stereo out is, is uh, it's summing every single track in your session out through two tracks. So you're going to get a lot more volume pushed out of this meter. Uh, one thing I want to point out is I use the, uh, the linear option here on my mix bus, and the reason I do is it shows me the peak level as well as the RMS level. Let's go ahead and take a look at that compared to the, um, to the submix, which is an auxiliary send. Questions fired out of the cannon. So I can look at that and I could already tell what, what my level is RMS and peak wise, just, just very helpful to me. All right, so the next thing that we do, we make sure that none of our levels uh, are clipping. Everything looks pretty good. Let's check the chorus. Okay, so uh, the recording wasn't uh, too uh, uh, absurdly hot. Uh, I, most of the time, uh, the sessions you get, that I get, a lot of folks get, are, are just too hot, and we don't need to record that hot. We are in the digital domain where there is no noise floor, so there's no reason to push stuff uh, really loudly uh, because we don't need to get over that noise floor. Uh, it is nice and quiet. <laughs> and pushing uh, pushing a digital channel uh, doesn't really sound nice and uh, you know and sweet like it would to hit a transformer really hard. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different options we have to uh, uh, change up the levels to all of our tracks. Uh, the first thing I want to start with is a thing called clip gain. Um, let's go ahead and make these bigger. Now clip gain is. Uh, you would find that in most DAWs, uh, it's just called clip gain in Pro Tools. And what clip gain uh, does is, for example, let's go to the kick drum. Uh, in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have a little meter. You can click on it, and you can raise it. You can lower it, and that uh, changes the volume of the track. So it's not just a visual thing. Okay. Um, you can go through and adjust each track that way if you would like. Uh, I just find it a little bit tedious to go through. Um, but sometimes it is the right, you know, it, it, it's whatever works for you. If that's the way that you like to work, great. Um, but clip gain is an option. Uh, in Pro Tools, we call these sections clips, not regions. I typically like to gain stage from an insert. So I have a couple inserts pulled open here. And the first one I want to take a look at is the good old trim tool from Pro Tools. Now, one thing I love about the trim tool is it's free. It comes with Pro Tools, but uh, we can use it for our uh, uh, gain reduction, uh, uh, increasing of gain, and also has a phase switch on it, so uh, uh, or a phase flip. Um, so you know, it's great if you're editing drums, things like that. So what I decided to do on this track is my goal is to get my mix bus to sit at around negative 18. Uh, RMS. That is what I'm going for. I'm not as bothered, as, uh, you know, as to if it's negative 18 per channel. I've heard a lot of people say that, oh, it has to be negative 18 because of this sweet spot and that sweet spot and this plugin is designed to be blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, maybe some are, but I really don't hear any difference if I'm putting negative 20 into it, negative 18 into it, negative 15 into it. I don't hear uh, a huge advantage, okay? Um, that's a whole other debate for another day, but really what you want to do is focus on how, how loud do you want your mix to be? I like to leave a lot of headroom because if I'm going to send something out to a mastering engineer, you know, I want them to have plenty of, uh, of room to work with. If, if I'm mastering, I want to leave myself plenty of room to work with. We can always make things louder. We can't always make things quieter. So uh, negative 10 is what I choose to start with here. Um, I've inserted this on every track. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hit option command, which is going to unbypass all of these. And then we're going to take a look at our levels. Uh, let's go to the chorus again. So much quieter. 
visually everything looks nice and under control. But this is the real area that I want to focus on here. I want to focus on the all buses and I want to focus on the submix and the mix bus because we're we're sending many, many tracks to these uh, 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 very few faders. So these are going to be uh, the loudest meters in the entire session. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to grab my uh, my metering tool. It doesn't matter which metering tool you use, what plugin you use. It just is whatever uh, you know works for you, wherever you can look at it and you can see what your uh, volume is, where your mix is at. Okay, so we're at a really good level here. We're around negative 23. And that's fine, okay? If I don't get to negative 18, I'm not bothered by it because the longer we mix, uh, uh, gain staging is a continuous thing. So as we keep mixing, volume is gonna keep increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. That's another reason that I have these, these all buses here, uh, which I will mention uh, in a few minutes because when I pull these down, uh, uh, if we get too loud, I can pull these down and kind of rescue uh, the mix if it gets out of control. It's just, I mean, they're kind of like my Swiss Army knives in my whole session here. So, um, so this is working for me, negative 23. So I kind of know that negative 10 is going to work across all of my channels here. I don't need to go lower. I don't need to go higher. Um, that's a great place. That That's on the chorus as well. So if we go to the verse, it'll be even lower. So negative 27 is fine. I'm very, very happy with it being there. Okay, so now that we know that negative 10 is what we kind of want to do on every single track here, uh, I want to explore a few different trimming options. So um, let's bypass the trim tool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, this is the uh, VMR from Slate Digital. This is a free plugin as long as you have an iLock 2. Uh, it's fantastic. As uh, It also comes with, let's see, Revival and The Monster, which are two uh, fantastic plugins. Uh, one's a Harmonic Exciter, the other is an 1176 with all buttons in. Um, and you can essentially just trim down and up, or you know, if you need to increase or decrease, you can do it all right here. I will often use the VMR in my mixes because I like to use this VCC channel uh, as the first insert on my mixes, which uh, emulates going through an analog desk. So it's right here. So why grab another, you know, why use another insert slot if you can use everything right there, okay? Um, so that's one option for you. Uh, again, I'm just showing you a few different, uh, a bunch of different things that you can do. Um, we went over the trim tool. Now I want to show you guys the BX console. You can use a channel strip uh, to essentially do the same thing. This is one of my favorite channel strips. Um, I put this across all the drums. So this has its own meter, uh, its output meter. Again, you see right here, DBU. And what's great is it has a precise fader that I can use. So I have the fader down, uh, down 10 decibels. Um, I like it because it shows you uh, digitally where you're at as well. Um, it has, you can see down by the Brainworks um, logo, it says negative 10. Uh, some channel strips don't have that precise of a tool. Uh, it's kind of just by by uh, by feel and uh, by the way it sounds. But here I know I'm actually reducing it 10 dB. Now if I look at the meter, this is showing me peak level. Right? I was around negative 8, so we're looking at around negative 16, negative 17, so uh, plus 10, that would, that would make perfect sense. So again, I'm going to bring this down to um, to negative 10, and I have that across all the drums. So you you could uh, you could put uh, your favorite channel strip across your entire session. Uh, go ahead and reduce your uh, level by whatever you need. Um, you know, and that's a great way to start your mix because I love channel strips. You got your EQ, your compressor, uh, filters, gates. Uh, you know, just just really really clever way. Um, but lately, my favorite uh, my favorite trim tool is uh, is this guy right here. Now this is a free plugin you can go download. I'm going to put a link uh, a link to this in the show notes where you can go and download it for free. Uh, this is from Blue Cat Audio. This is called uh, Blue Cat's Gain. Uh, and it's just it's 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 a, a gain knob very much like the trim tool uh, that comes with Pro Tools, but what's what's really cool about this one here is you can group um, your uh, well I should say you can uh, group certain tracks to kind of run off the same gain knob. So what I've done here is I put all the drums in group A, 
Uh, so if we listen. Okay, as I just take one knob, I can control my entire group of drums, which is super helpful because let's say you're trying to figure out, um, <laughs> as I bump the mic, let's say you're trying to figure out which, um, you know, what, uh, what level, you know, you want everything to be at. You're not sure if it's negative 10 or negative 12 or negative eight. And instead of having to go to uh, each individual plugin and change it from negative 10 to negative eight, and then try that, you can just grab your knob here, uh, assign it to the group, uh, uh, of your choice, and you can listen to the entire set of tracks. So it's just a really, really helpful tool. Uh, here I've gone and assigned, uh, all the drums, uh, are on a, um, don't have anything on the percussion or the bass because it's only one, but uh, acoustics are B, electrics are C, keys are uh, D, and vocals are on E. So uh, it'll do the same thing as the trim tool. Just clipped when I was pushing the drums there. So again, we can see that we're, we're around the same place we were before. We're at uh, negative 23. So, you know, the, the, um, the Blue Cat Audio Gain is a great, great plugin to use. It's a, it's a fantastic tool. Um, now, one thing I want to just mention uh, before we wrap up is, um, so all of my audio is coming to these six auxes, okay? Um, I have them all grouped. And the reason I have them grouped is let's say we get volume adding up throughout the course of the mix. Well, one thing I can do is these are all going to submix and then submix goes out to mix bus. But let's say I need to bring everything down by 5 dB. But it's kind of a tough thing to do that way because uh, if you go ahead and lower the individual levels of like all your drums and your bass and all your guitars and, and, and everything like that, it's going to throw off your entire mix because you're going to have to go in and recalibrate your compression and your EQ and your saturation and all those things. But what I can do here is if I just bring everything down, um, the only thing I will have to kind of reset up is what is on my mix bus. Let me show you what I mean. So... Uh, right now it's at Unity, it's at zero. Uh, here is a mix bus compressor that I love, the VSC uh, 2 from uh, from Vertigo, Brainworks, and Plugin Alliance. So you can see that we're doing about 1 to 2 dB of compression, all right? Uh, threshold is where I want it. Everything is at Unity. Now let's just say we had a whole, whole lot of level going in here and I needed to uh, bring this stuff down. Watch what happens. So that's down 6 dB. Now look at the compressor. We're not getting any more compression. So that's okay. All we have to do now is just kind of uh, lower our threshold a little bit. Now we're back in business. Um, we don't have to go through every single track and do this to uh, all the compressors, all the EQs. The only thing we would have to do is uh, tweak whatever we have on our mix bus here. It's just a very helpful thing for me personally in my workflow for the way that I work. Uh, the other way that that's helpful, uh, if I want to automate those uh, those faders, it's easy. If I want to automate the drums, bring the drums up in a chorus or something like that, I only have to do it on one fader. But it's especially helpful uh, with gain staging you know, in the middle of a mix or towards the end of a mix because you can just pull it down a little bit and that will uh, reduce the overall uh, uh, level that you send into your submix or your mix bus. Okay, so that's essentially the way that I like to gain stage my mixes. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a an ongoing uh, theme throughout the course of your mix, but you have to have a good fundamental starting point and uh, it's important to get your levels right at the beginning of your mix. Okay, so that's it for me. My name is Pete with MixBetterNow.com. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time.